Hey everyone, welcome to Solvo EDC. In my last video we were talking about a worn cleave blade and it made me realize how much I love tactical knives. So today I returned with another one. And I just wish my dog could do the same in the dog park, I would have a lot more knives. Anyways, this is the Benchmade bailout with green anodized aluminum handles, a Cerakoted grey M4 Tanto blade and black hardware. It also has a thumbstead opener that makes using the knife very intuitive and also allows the blade to be concealed a lot further inside the handle when the knife is closed. As a result, we get a pretty compact carry profile comparing it to a Spider Koyo Jimbo for example. The thumbstead also makes the bailout super snappy and it never misfires. I can also open it in a reverse grip, which is something that not every folder allows me to do, especially not flippers. The bailout is fully ambidextrous, which fits the philosophy of Benchmade's signature axis lock, allowing us to easily operate the knife with both hands. I think this is an amazing approach from Benchmade, not simply because it involves lefty people, a knife being ambidextrous also benefits right-handed users just the same. Personally, I found myself reaching for my knife with my weak hand very often. And over the years I slowly learned how to operate all my knives with my left hand, so in that regard all my knives can be called ambidextrous. The bailout just does it better than a disgusting liner lock for example, as the axis lock is completely finger safe. And I also prefer crossbar locks over button locks as they are way harder to disengage by accident. However, the Benchmade axis lock has a fatal downside and it is the so-called Omega spring, which actuates it. Omega springs usually last for a long time but eventually they all snap one day and it is purely up to your luck how much use you can get out of them. And you can just pray that this ominous snap doesn't happen to you in a critical moment. I truly don't understand why Benchmade, including some other brands, use these crappy Omega springs when there are so many better options out there. Using a Koi spring would be a lot safer. That is what Spyderco uses in their similarly ambidextrous ball bearing lock alongside Microtech's brand new RAM lock. One other complaint about the Benchmade bailout would be the price tag. By costing $300, I think this knife is horribly overpriced compared to its value. In 2024 you can get better designed, more reliable knives with the same M4 blade steel for less than half the price. A Blade HQ exclusive Spyderco Endura is such an option. But even if you are a Benchmade fanboy you can get an Osborne with the same steel, same blade length, same axis lock and better usability for less than $200. It is just typical Benchmade marketing to put a higher price tag on something so it would look a lot more premium. Meanwhile it is not at all premium and let me explain why, because my pulse just started ticking higher. Shopping for this knife was a true headache, but not because it was expensive. The largest issue with the Benchmade bailout was the extremely poor quality control. For my $300 I had to return not just the first, but also the second knife I got, as they had very ugly blems on them. To be able to film this review I had to buy a third knife, so I call this one you see in my hand Benchmade bailout the third. So, it is now officially an overpriced premium wannabe knife, but at least it has a classy title going for it. This is a point in the review where things truly start to get comical, not because I was a funny guy, but because this brand new knife has serious functional issues, including a terrible centering that I simply cannot fix. You can clearly see how bad it looks, and take my word, it feels bad too. The blade is literally grinding toward the handle, when I gently tap the knife with my two fingers from the side, I can clearly hear the blade banging into the scale. And before you would tell me to tighten the pivot, I tried and it doesn't help. It only causes the blade to lock in or become loose and wobbly, but it won't change the centering. And yes, I also attempted to adjust the body screws. Maybe the scales are just twisted, but literally nothing helps. So. I sent a mail to the retailer who sold this knife to me and they confirmed that they are having a lot of issues with the quality of Benchmade knives lately. And this is why you are supposed to buy this so-called premium pocket knife that is genuinely less useful than a $130 Spider Co with a rock solid backlock and the same M4 blade steel. And if I'm already complaining about the blade, I have to get into this awkward geometry too. The bailout has one large, unified flat grind, contrary to traditional tantos that usually have a two-tone compound grind, which has the purpose of providing a beefier tip. Let me pull up a whole back way back so I could illustrate what I'm talking about. I think it is pretty easy to spot the difference, but Benchmade for some unknown reason loves this weird flat tanto grind and they have it on many other tactical knives, including the shootout and even the new Claymore. 
I won't rant about it too too much, it is what it is, some people love it, others don't. I honestly tried to approach this geometric question with an open mind and I told myself that it must have a secret feature and if I could understand this mysterious full flat tanto grind, it would increase my familiarity with pocket knives. I love innovation and I looked at it as it was an experiment. But after using it, I honestly don't see any benefits compared to a traditional tanto. I find this bailout solution a clear step backward, because the whole advantage of a tanto geometry would be increased tip strength for superior piercing. It is bullshit that this way the knife is more slicey, as the grind line starts higher, because you could literally have the same blade back here, just with a beefier tip, and Benchmade gave up this amazing tip strength boost to gain nothing. And yes, it is true that CPM M4 features amazing toughness, but even if the bailout runs with this magic steel, it would be a lot more advantageous to combine it with improved geometry. And I genuinely appreciate M4, but in this presentation, it genuinely feels like putting a V12 engine into a tiny car. It makes no sense, because the weak construction will eventually limit capabilities after a certain point. What I want to say is that this M4 Tanto blade had a great potential, but the execution just ruined everything. But let's cheer up for a second, I really want to give Benchmate some credit. I love what they did with the handle, because the bailout fixed my number one greatest complaint about the bug out, the flimsy and squeaky scales. The bailout handles are very tough and they don't bend at all. On top of that, the aircraft grade aluminum scales are screwed together without using a steel frame. I'm loving this simple yet powerful concept because it is rigid yet very light. And the touch of these handles is also amazing. This pure auto design is the only thing that justifies why the bailout can be actually sold for around 300 bucks. I think Benchmade put in a lot of time and effort when they designed and machined this dynamic diamond texturing. Combined with anodization, this diamond grip gives the bailout a nice silky touch. And the only downside of this finish is its durability, because it wears off super quickly. If you look at any other long-term YouTube reviews about aluminum Benchmade knives, you will see my point. And this is something I never really understood about Benchmade. My other aluminum knives from the same price range age way differently. This Hoagie X5 still looks brand new, even though I carry it almost every day. Same thing with my Microtech Exo set that I literally beat up every day and it still looks super fine. But I digressed. I also like the backspacer pocket clip glass breaker combo. I think it's absolutely not ruining the knife's ergonomy. And I never understood why so many people weep about the glass breaker poking their baby hands. For me, it was not an issue. Or let me rephrase what I just said. I think this form factor was a good call, as my complaint is yet again the execution. The backspacer is of course made out of aluminum, which is an unacceptable choice for a striking tool. Simply because it melts away like butter. I did not even try to use mine and I chipped off a corner already. I know that the tip itself is carbide, but still, Benchmade should have picked titanium or steel for its casing. In this current form, this backspacer is a very dumb interpretation of a potentially good idea, which makes it painful to look at because it is such an obvious mistake, similarly to the full flat tanto grind. And at this point I really feel awkward, because probably the pocket clip is the only thing I don't have a problem with on the Benchmade bailout. So my conclusion is very grim. The bailout is marketed as a battle-tested tactical folder for a premium price. In their advertisement, Benchmade shows soldiers and first responders using this thing, but after having it in my hand, I'm saying with a great confidence that I would never ever trust this thing in a real life and death scenario. Putting it up against Winkler knives or K-bars that first responders actually use, the bailout feels like a toy. A toy with a wobbly blade that wasn't built properly and a toy that costs $300. Also, I had to buy it three times with my hard-earned money, and I still didn't get one that works well. What do you think about the bailout, guys? And also, what's your favorite tactical folder? I'm truly open to suggestions, so let me know in the comments, and don't forget to leave a like, because this review for me was super tough to make. Also, if you want to see my other reviews, I invite you to check out my previous videos about the 6 hour EX5 by Hogue Knives, or this Microtech Exo set. Stay sharp, guys, thanks for watching, and take care.